Hello everyone, today I'll be talking about atomic theory, atoms, electrons, protons, and neutrons, uh, average atomic mass, Avogadro's number, and molar mass. I will give some example on how to calculate atomic mass. I also would, uh, will provide a link uh, to the material uh, in the description of the video. First is the concept of atoms were proposed, uh, was proposed by Democritus, uh, which was uh, an philosopher, uh, a philosopher uh, around the year 460. Uh, he looked at the sand and he said th uh, this, uh, the particles of sand must contain smaller particles, uh, which he named them uh, at this time atoms. Aristotle uh, opposed that idea and he uh, said that all materials on Earth must con uh, must um, uh, must be made out of four basic elements uh, earth, fire, water, and the air. The concept of Aristotle remained for 2000 years and the, uh, until the, uh, Dalton made some um, experiments uh, on the uh, elements. He discovered, uh, he postulated that uh, in his theory that atoms, uh, uh, any element uh, contains atoms, and those atoms of the same element would be. Uh, would have the same uh, structure, while the atoms of different element uh, are different. W um, the formation of compound is a combination of elements with a certain ratio, and the different ratio uh, would give me different compounds. Uh, to uh, Example for that, if I have carbon, the combination between element carbon and the element oxygen one to one would give me carbon monoxide, while uh, the combination between carbon with uh, to oxygen one to two would give me carbon mon uh, dioxide. Scientists around the uh, middle of 19th century uh, uh, we're more in, uh, interested in uh, studying radiation and the study of radiation led to the discovery of the electron. Uh, the cathode ray uh, that we see here is uh, composed of, uh, 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 of a uh, glass tube uh, that empty almost uh, 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 empty, empty from air which uh, is m almost a vacuum and uh, two um, plates one of them, uh, uh, two elements that connected together, one of them cathode and the other is anode, connected to a high voltage. Uh, the other side contains a fluorescent screen that when the, he, uh, the ray hits this screen, it just illuminates. Um, the cathode, when the high voltage is applied, the cathode uh, produces a ray that uh, flies from uh, the cathode until it hits point A. When they applied a magnetic field, they found out that this ray deviated to the point A, while applying electric field uh, at uh, the middle of the tube deviated this uh, ray to the point C. Uh, applying the magnet and the electric field, both of them at the same time would uh, lead to the, uh, the ray to hit the point B again. From uh, cathode ray uh, results, they concluded that uh, the ray must contain negative particles. This is why it deviated or rebuilt uh, uh, away from uh, the negative plate of the electric field. So, atom now must contain the negative particles. Those particles, they, they named them electrons. Uh, first attempt to uh, calculate the mass of electrons were done by uh, Thomson. Uh, he concluded that uh, the mass uh, uh, in relative, uh, uh, the charge in relative to the mass is equal minus 1.67 multiplied by 10 to the power 8 uh, charge over mass. Uh, Malcolm took a further step in calculating the mass of the electrons uh, using uh, this design. Uh, he had uh, two charged plates, uh, the positive uh, plate on the top and the negative on the bottom, and he allowed atomizer to spray oil droplets, uh, and these oil droplets are allowed to fly to the uh, second plate through a small hole. He viewed the uh, using a microscope, and from his uh, uh, experiment, he concluded that the mass of an electron 
is equal to 9.1 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 28 gram. Thomson said if there is a negative particles in the atom, the atom must contain a positive particles as well because it is neutral. Uh, he proposed that the presence of, uh, uh, of the uh, negative particles uh, in relative to the uh, positive uh, particles it is like um, a negative particles is like j uh, just a dots on a very big sphere of pos uh, positive uh, uh, entity so the big sphere is actually the positive protons and the negative part is, is just like a dots uh, or um, embedded in the large sphere so those are the electrons Radioactivity led to further uh, discovery uh, in the atoms. Uh, Rutingitin noticed that cathode ray caused, uh, caused the metal to emit radiation that cannot be deflected by magnet uh, and dark in photographic uh, plates. He named them X-ray. Uh, Bicurel and Marie Curie discovered the uranium uh, um, even can radiate without uh, a cathode ray tube. So in their experiments, they used um, uh, uranium in a lead box that they allowed it uh, to um, uh, to hit a large fluorescent screen. Uh, they found that there is uh, a deviation uh, when is an electric field uh, applied. There is an devi deviation to a certain point uh, near the negative uh, um, negative field uh, on the top while a deviation to the positive uh, part of the mag uh, of the electric field and down and there are some um, fluorescent uh, dots on the middle of the screen from uh, this discovery uh, by Marie Curie uh, they discovered that um, uh, uranium or any uh, radioactive element would just uh, um, would uh, decay uh, and the, the decay would give out uh, alpha particles which uh, is uh, uh, which is identified by uh, the symbol uh, HE uh, positive to to um, to give an indication that this helium uh, atom doesn't contain or this uh, helium particles doesn't contain any electrons so the helium in that case is just uh, two protons and two neutrons the beta particles they assumed that there is a, what is called a, be, a negative beta decay and this negative uh, beta decay where neutrons would just uh, convert uh, into protons plus uh, negative electrons and what is called the neutrino is um, uh, neutrino is just uh, released as well uh, the positive uh, beta decay uh, is the conversion of uh, one proton into neutron plus uh, positive electrons and uh, positron and um, they uh, try to like to discover how far the radiation can uh, uh, can penetrate uh, materials and they uh, discovered that alpha particles only penetrate uh, paper and while uh, uh, beta can be treated and uh, uh, paper and can be stopped using uh, uh, wood or aluminum uh, foil, X-ray can be treated on uh, both of them, the wood and the paper, and can be stopped uh, using lead. Gamma rays can be stopped also by lead, and the neutrons uh, can be stopped only by water uh, concre uh, and the concrete. Rutherford used uh, the discovery of alpha particles to study the atom. Uh, in his study, he used a very thin gold foil uh, in the middle of a ring, and uh, he uh, he had uh, this uh, uh, emitter, alpha em uh, emitter particles, in one side in a lead box. He allowed the uh, alpha emitter uh, particles to fly fast, uh, hitting the gold foil. And he studied, uh, he looked at the screen uh, or the ring uh, around uh, the gold foil. The fluorescent screen showed. Uh, uh, showed the, uh, the radiation uh, of the alpha particles. The spots were scattered all over the ring and uh, some of those spots actually deflected back uh, from uh, when hitting the gold foil. Uh, 
uh, he proposed uh, um, uh, a model for the atom where he said that there must be a positive uh, particles in the center of the uh, of the atom that uh, the alpha particles when it hit it it just deflected back and uh, it must be an empty a very large empty space around the atom uh, uh, around the nucleus um, uh, where uh, where the alpha particles just passed through uh, this empty space uh, around this uh, nucleus uh, electrons uh, negatively charged where the alpha particles just deviated to the uh, top uh, or the bottom of the screen um, uh, Rutherford model uh, didn't solve one major problem. Uh, if the uh, atom is composed of uh, uh, two uh, components, which is electrons and the protons, uh, this means uh, the mass of hydrogen to the helium should be 1 to 2, while in real life it is 1 to 4. So this, uh, uh, this calculation uh, made it hard to uh, understand the atomic uh, model. Uh, should we uh, uh, done some study on uh, radiation and he discovered that bombarding beryllium with alpha particle results in emitting array of third subatomic component, he named them neutrons. These neutrons actually um, is uh, are neutral, so the uh, then uh, the atom uh, by then they dis uh, they proposed the model which uh, contains atom is composed of electrons and two other components in the nucleus which is positively protons and uh, neutral neutrons, and the electrons of course is negatively charged. Now. Uh, they can um, they, uh, they start to organize the element in the atomic uh, uh, in the periodic table and they said now we have what we call the atomic number mass number and isotopes uh, the atomic number would be the uh, number of the uh, protons uh, in neutral atoms uh, it also would be uh, similar to the number of electrons in neutral atoms uh, while the mass number is the number of protons plus neutrons and the isotopes is uh, a two element that uh, the same element that have different number of neutrons so for something like uh, hydrogen uh, the number of uh, uh, of the uh, the atomic number would be uh, the atomic number would be in the down part so this is the atomic number and the uh, mass number would be uh, at the top, which is uh, marked as A, atomic mass. And in different isotopes, the number of the atomic mass would be uh, different, while the atomic number would stay the same. Uh, so we can now, from, uh, from that point, uh, uh, we can now um, know the number of neutrons or the number of uh, um, uh, the atomic mass in relative uh, to the other uh, numbers that we know. So the mass number would be the number of protons plus number of neutrons. The atomic number would be equal to uh, mass number minus neutrons so example for that if I have isotopes uh, uranium isotopes to 135 and to 138 my um, atomic number is uh, 92 so uranium would have this number 92 at the bottom and on the top I, I either have the 238 or I have the 200, uh, uh, the 235 or the 238. Uh, so my number of protons would be this number and the number of neutrons would be the 235 minus the 92, uh, which is uh, equal to uh, 143 
or uh, in case of uh, uh, the uranium uh, 38 would be minus uh, 92 which means in that case neutrons would be 146 so the atomic structure is now became more clearer where you have the atomic symbol in the uh, when they wrote the periodic table they wrote the atomic symbol in the middle uh, you have the uh, name of the um, of the element and on the top you will have the mass number and down would be the atomic number so the negative electrons in neutral atom would be also equal to the atomic number while the positive protons is the atomic uh, number and in, uh, neutral neutrons would be equal the uh, subtraction of the two numbers example uh, if I have something like cobalt uh, which is used in uh, radiation therapy uh, for cancer I have is uh, to uh, I have isotopes has 33 nitrons uh, in the nucleus what is the nuclear uh, symbol so the nuclear symbol would be uh, first I can uh, write in the middle I would write uh, cobalt and uh, the C would be capital and the O would be small and uh, my Z number is the 27 which is down while I'm given here the number of neutrons this means I have to add the number of neutrons plus the number of um, protons to be able to get the number uh, the uh, mass number which is equal to 27 plus 33 now let's talk about the average atomic mass so the atomic mass uh, like we said is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons but for periodic table which one of them should I use in the periodic table the carbon 13 or uh, the carbon 12 to be able to solve this problem we take what is known as the average atomic mass so my average atomic mass would be equal the uh, relative abundance of uh, carbon 12 in case of carbon 12 it will be 98.9 divided by 100 I will multiply this one by 12 and sum this up with the abundance of relative abundance of carbon 13 divided by 100 and I will multiply it by the atomic mass of the carbon 13 and the average here which is equal 12.01 is the one I will, be I will be using to represent carbon in periodic table so what we see actually in periodic table is the average atomic number not the actual atomic number because it is just the average of all uh, isotopes that any element represents now for atomic mass you have to know that one uh, uh, one dust uh, spike contains one multiplied by 10 to the power 6 atoms and uh, the atomic mass is measured in, uh, in a, uh, with a unit that is called atomic mass unit now the atomic mass unit is the mass that equals the mass of 1 12 is the mass of one carbon atom we mean by that uh, something like hydrogen if I have hydrogen the atomic mass of uh, hydrogen uh, would be equal to uh, 8.4 divided by 100 the 8.4 is actually the, uh, the mass of uh, hydrogen relative to carbon so what we do usually we um, we cannot get the mass di directly by direct method but we relate that to the mass of the carbon uh, and the mass of hydrogen is 8.4 the mass of carbon so if I want to get uh, the atomic mass of uh, hydrogen uh, which is 8.4 divided by 100 and uh, the, atom uh, the atomic mass of uh, carbon which is uh, uh, which means I will multiply this by 12 atomic mass unit of the carbon which is equal to 1.008 atomic mass units so this is how I can get 
the uh, the mass of one hydrogen atom uh, the atomic uh, mass of one hydrogen so to be able to calculate the atomic mass i must use this um, relation which is uh, states that atomic mass y would be equal the atomic mass of the first isotopes multiplied by the relative abundance of these isotopes plus uh, the atomic mass of the second isotopes uh, multiplied by the relative abundance of the second isotopes. Example for that, carbon uh, uh, chlorine, um, uh, chlorine uh, 34, uh, which is uh, the atomic mass unit for it, 34.97 multiplied by uh, the relative abundance of chlorine uh, 34, which, uh, 35, which is equal 75.5 divided by 100. I will sum this up with the um, ma uh, atomic uh, mass unit of the, uh, the mass unit of the chlorine, uh, which is 36, uh, and the relative abundance of uh, chlorine um, uh, 30, uh, six, uh, or 37 which is equal to 35.46 atomic mass now let's take one example the atomic masses of copper uh, for two isotopes uh, copper 63 is 69.09% uh, uh, and uh, the for copper 65 is 30.91% are uh, 62 uh, 0.63 uh, atomic mass unit and the mass for uh, the carbon uh, 60, uh, cover 65 is 64.9 uh, respectively calculate the average atomic mass for cover to uh, uh, calculate the average for cover would be equal to uh, the relative abundance of the first isotopes which is 69.09 divided by 100 and I will multiply this one by the mass of uh, uh, cover 63 which is 62.93 then I will sum this up with um, the other isotope for the cover which is uh, 65 the relative abundance is 30 0.91 divided by 100 I will multiply this one by 64 the atomic mass for the uh, cover 65 which is 64.927 and 8 so the answer for that is 63.55 atomic mass unit Another example, bromine is a red-orange liquid with an average atomic mass of 79.9 atomic mass unit. It has two naturally occurring isotopes, bromine 79 with atomic mass 78.9 and bromine 81 with um, atomic mass 80. What is the relative abundance of the heavier isotopes? Uh, for the heavier isotope so for the heavier isotope 81 if I assumed that the relative abundance for this one to be X this means the relative abundance of the lighter one is actually 100 minus X so if I have the total number with the average atomic number is equal 79.9 atomic mass unit is equal to um, the first one which is uh, uh, 78 0.992 multiplied by 100 minus x I will plus the relative abundance of the second one which is uh, I have to remember I have to divide this by 100 because the relative abundance comes in percent as a percentage so plus the second one is um, 80.92 multiplied by x over 100 if I try to solve this one so um, in that case x would be equal 49 and I would consider to be a percentage so x equal 49 so the relative abundance percentage for the heavier one which is the 81 is 49 while for um, bromine uh, 
79 I can just uh, say 100 minus 49 which is uh, 51 this is the relative abundance for the bromine 79 So, Avogadro's number uh, is the number of atoms in one mole. Like we said, uh, scientists needed to identify as um, a, a unit that uh, is unifying uh, all, uh, that they can calculate all units according to. So they came up with the, uh, uh, with the mole. Then Avogadro came and said, uh, made some experiment and uh, and the calculation and uh, the result was that he assumed that any uh, one mole of any uh, of any element should contain uh, 6.022 multiplied by 10 to the power 23 uh, atoms so the atomic mass unit now for something like uh, like carbon is 12 gram and the molar mass of carbon is 12 atomic mass unit the atomic mass uh, for sodium is 22.99 gram and uh, the molar mass uh, for uh, sodium is 22.99 atomic mass unit so the mass of one atom can be given from uh, that relation if I assumed for something like the mass of carbon uh, 12 I would say that 12 grams of carbon 12 divided by uh, the number of the atoms in one mole which is 6.022 multiplied by 10 to the power 23 carbon 12 would be equal 1.993 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 23 gram so this would be the mass of one atom So I have uh, to relate the mass of an element to the number of moles and the number of atoms. So uh, the relation uh, between the three of them, the number of moles is actually equal the mass in grams divided by the molar mass. Uh, while uh, the number of atoms would be equal the number of moles divided by Avogadro's number. Now let's look at one example to be uh, to be able to understand more uh, about the mole and uh, the Avogadro's number. Helium is a valuable gas. Uh, it have many uses. Uh, here we are asked how many moles of helium atoms in 6.46 uh, gram of helium. I know that one mole of helium is equal to 4.003 grams helium. So if I want the number of uh, moles, number of moles, in that case would be equal to the grams that I'm giving, which is 6.46 gram, multiplied the one mole of helium, divided by the uh, four grams, helium which would be equal to 1.61 mole helium so we could, we could say that if I have one mole of helium uh, which is equal 4 uh, grams of helium uh, how many moles I have if I have 6.46 uh, so I multiply those together and divide them by, uh, by this value now Moving to sulfur is a non-metallic element that is present in uh, coal. Um, uh, in this time, how many atoms are in 16.3 grams of sulfur? So I know that sulfur, in general, one mole of sulfur is equal to 32.07 grams of sulfur. So if I have 16.3 grams of sulfur, how many atoms do I have? I know also that one mole actually contains the Avogadro's number, which is equal to 6.022 multiplied by 10 to the power 23. So any 
uh, one mole of any element is actually equal to this number of atoms so if I have this relation uh, if I have here one mole equal 6.3 so what I need here to know is the number of atoms in that case to be able to know the number of atoms for sulfur it would be equal to I will multiply this first which is 16.39 grams multiplied by one mole I will divide it by this value which is 32.07 grams multiplied by one mole uh, multiplied by Avogadro's number 6.0 22 multiplied by 10 to the power 23 in one mole here is atoms which is equal to 3.06 multiplied by 10 to the power 23 atoms so 16.3 grams of uh, sulfur actually contains 3.06 multiplied by 10 to the power 23 atoms so first I multiply the grams I'm given and my uh, for one mole it is equal to 32 while uh, in the other part uh, I will look at the number of atoms in one mole uh, to be able to uh, to know if I'm right or wrong I should um, cancel uh, the units against each other and if I end up with the right unit this means I have um, uh, calculated my uh, uh, I ca have, have made uh, a correct calculation so here I cancel gram with gram mole with mole so I end up with atom so this is uh, uh, and this is what I wanted from the first place so this is uh, uh, this is how I can make sure that I have made a correct uh, calculation let's look at another example here uh, we look at the arsenic and uh, according to Avogadro's number uh, like we said it have uh, atoms uh, the, uh, the number of atoms is in one mole is equal to 6.022 multiplied by 10 to the uh, 23 if I want to know the mass of arsenic atom for for single one atom if I know that this is Avogadro's number is actually 6.022 multiplied by 10 to the power 23 um, the, those atoms exist in uh, 74.92 this is the, uh, the atomic uh, mass of the arsenic so if I know that uh, 74.92 uh, grams of arsenic contains this uh, uh, Avogadro's number so I need uh, for just only one atom so the mass of one atom would be equal 74.92 grams multiplied by one atom and divided by 6.022 multiplied by 10 to the power 23 atoms which is equal to 1.244 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 22 grams so the second part asks me the number of atoms in 10 grams of arsenic now if I know the uh, mass of one atom I need to know the mass of 10 atoms in that case so to uh, do it uh, to uh, answer the second part number of atoms is equal 10 grams multiplied by if I know that one atom has a mass of 1.244 that I got from the first uh, um, first step 10 to the power 10 minus 22 which is equal to 8.038 multiplied by 10 to the power 22 atoms so again this part if I know the mass of one atom I need to uh, know the, ma uh, the 
uh, I need to know the mass of 10 grams how many atoms in 10 grams so how many atoms in this uh, uh, in this 10 grams so I multiply the 10 by uh, 1 and divided by 1.44 now we came to this uh, to the end of this uh, video. Next video uh, will be about uh, atoms, molecules, and ions. Thank you and goodbye.